In a post-fire scenario, the trees and plants are not there anymore to absorb the water that falls onto the ground. And so typically what you see after a fire is larger runoffs and faster runoffs, which can lead to flooding downstream because the reservoirs that are in place right now are already having a difficult time absorbing the kind of rapid um, snow melt and runoff scenarios that we've been seeing. When we look at the location of the present rim fire near Yosemite National Park, ever since this area got settled, and this is uh, pretty much pertains to the entire Sierra Nevada, there's been this continual push to suppress wildfires to protect the value of property. And so the result that you see um, due to the suppression, um, you essentially see a lot more trees and a lot more dead debris on the ground that would have not been in place had it been for natural occurring wild wildfires. Couple the suppression of fire with the recent um, droughts that we've been hearing so much about in the western United States, you essentially have a lot of fuel that, um, that can catch and create these massive uh, blazes that we've been seeing. So when we look at uh, the effects of this fire, there's actually both short-term effects and long-term effects. And this is not just the Yosemite but fire, but most of the wildfires that we're seeing um, out in the west in the western United States right now. In the short term, the direct impact is one of actual physical damage to the infrastructure. So both to the uh, electric grid, which can get damaged and hence this just impedes your ability to del deliver electricity right now, but as well as to the water grid. So you can damage the actual pipes and the, the, the canals um, that are present. You might even actually damage water quality directly right now. So when we're talking about the long-term effects of, of these kinds of fires, um, we're talking about actual impacts of the ecosystems and the watersheds that deliver water downstream to various stakeholders. There wouldn't necessarily be a water shortage, but the timing of the water delivery would be different. Right. So right now, um, when snow falls onto the ground, it melts throughout the year to provide water down, downstream to various stakeholders. Um, that said, if you remove the trees that are in place, um, it exposes the snow to a lot more radiation. And so that causes the snow to melt sooner. And if all of the snow melts quicker, the reservoirs, which are in place to hold a certain amount of water, essentially, can cope with all that, so they might have to release sooner. And on top of that, if you have large rain events and the soil and the trees aren't there in place to basically buffer that water, your runoffs are quicker. So what essentially happens is you're going to get a lot more water in the springtime, and the reservoirs aren't equipped to handle that, so they might have to release sooner. So you might actually see shortages in the summer that are actually a result of quicker runoff as opposed to actually having droughts. On top of that, there's uh, possible effects for water quality where you have debris running off um, from these sites, you might have increased sediment loading, you might have more nutrients washing down into the rivers, which are affecting both local watersheds in the mountains, but then also downstream watersheds um, in larger rivers and estuaries.